Hey friends, it is an exciting time here in Dallas, North Carolina. Do you know why it's exciting? Because the hummingbirds have returned back home. It is fantastic. I am a huge fan of my hummers, as I call them. And so today is Monday. We were Saturday at the nursery when we had already closed and Jerry saw the first one. Then we were sitting out here yesterday, Sunday, and Mr. Hummer came up to the feeder that I had not filled up yet, I know, and was just looking for his food. So today, what I am going to do is I am going to share with you some great plants to attract hummingbirds to your garden. We're going to talk about all things Hummers, and I have got three pots right here that we are going to put together to help attract hummingbirds to your garden. Um, these pots... I have in my head that they would be grouped together and they would be placed as a group, a trio, um, anywhere on a patio, a deck, a, you know, in the garden, whatever. Um, but these plants will work together to attract the hummingbirds to your garden. So we here on the east of the Mississippi, we only get one hummingbird and that is our beloved ruby red throated hummingbird and it seems like the boys come first and so that's what we have right now but hummingbirds are attracted to really bright bright colors especially like your reds your oranges your purples those because they can see in ultraviolet colors so that is what we're going to go with um, it just so happens that hummingbirds like bright orange and purple i mean i can't help that those are clemson colors but they are, so that is gonna be kind of the theme for today. My three planters, we're gonna start with really great potting soil. This is the Proven Winners potting soil. It's the only one that I use in my containers because it is extremely high quality. The manufacturer that makes our professional mixes makes the Proven Winners also. Lots of good aged pine bark finds in here. It retains water, but it also helps drain um, rel relatively quickly so it doesn't hold on to water. So all I have done is simply filled in these three containers all the way full with the Proven Winners potting soil. Now, it does have, the Proven Winners potting soil does have their time release fertilizer in there, but these plants that we're gonna put in here are very heavy feeders, and I'm just gonna supplement just a little bit for all three of these containers. Your time release fertilizer is released by temperature. So as the temperatures go up, the more food it releases. Here in the South where I am, I find that about after three months, you need to refresh. Once your plants are in there, you can just make sure your plants are dry, shake it in there, zhuzh your plants around and that food will fall down into your soil and do um, nicely. So every time it rains or you water, then it is feeding the plants. Now I know for the new gardener, you may be going, Jenny, why in the world did you just add more fertilizer? Like you're gonna over fertilize your plants. Why did you just do that? And I say this with the most love and truly like love in my heart. We have been doing these pots like this way for 10, 11, 12 years. And this works really well for us here in the South. Um, where I am, I have never had a problem. And this is time release. I am not shocking these plants with massive amounts of fertilizer at one time. I am not overfeeding them. I am not gonna burn their roots. This is a nice time release, slow release fertilizer. So we are good to go. Three pots, same color, different sizes. So in little bitty over here, what we're gonna do is we are going to use calibrachoas. So calibrachoas are wonderful attractors for hummingbirds. This happens to be the Super Bell's Coral Sun, which is a nice, beautiful, it'll depend on what you pair it with, but it has a yellow throat, meaning the inside of the flower is yellow. And then the outer edges, that's where it's gonna kind of depend on your color palette. It could go peach or it could go more orange. So we're gonna go more orange because of what we're gonna pair it with. And I'm gonna put it here in the middle of the pot. Now, this is a small pot. I am only gonna use one grande size Super Bell. And that will fill in really nicely. I know at this moment it may seem a little bit small, but I promise, again, knowing these plants and know how they grow, we're only gonna put the one plant in here. And it's gonna fill in, not only fill in, but it'll trail over. All the plants today can go both into the landscape or a container. 
The only kind of caveat would be your super bell. Unless you have really sandy, well-draining soil, these do better in containers because they hate wet feet. So we've got the super bells, coral sun, nice yellow, vibrant, peachy, orange blooms on it. It's gonna fill in and spill over. My medium sized pot, we are going to put in the number one hummingbird attractor plant in my opinion. And I'm gonna fill it in a little bit more. This is my beloved vermilionaire. Vermilionaire is a type of kufia and or firecracker plants, like people will call them firecracker plants. This thing, the hummingbirds go absolutely nuts over this plant. It is a wonderful plant for the container. It is a wonderful plant for the landscape. In both the landscape and the container, it has more of an open, airy, kind of a whimsical look to it and kind of a spiky, think of like firecrackers, right? Firecrackers shooting and it's all um, out there and whimsical. So that is what it is but you have these gorgeous ultraviolet neon orange colored flowers on them and they're tubular so it's very nice and easy for the hummingbirds to get their little beaks into this plant um, because some people will think well that's not very much of you know of a flower because it's not big like a petunia and that is true but hummingbirds bumblebees honeybees love this plant You'll notice I had two plants and I am planting them as one. So I kind of made a bigger bit of a bigger hole and planted them in there together. It just bulks up my container. If I was planting this really to go like long term from now, which is the 1st of April, all the way through November, I would have just put one plant. I want to attract as many hummingbirds quickly as I can. So I went ahead and put two in there. So kufia, another great plant to attract your hummingbirds. Next, petunias. This is Supertunia's Royal Velvet. Nice, gorgeous, rich, rich purple color. I mean, we've got purple and orange right here together. And it is a fantastic combo, not only for, you know, our beloved Clemson Tigers, but also to attract the hummingbirds. Again, I'm going to do a little overpacking on this particular container because I want it nice and full um, and this royal velvet is going to do it for me. Now at this exact moment it may look that the royal velvet is going to be taller than your kufia. You just got to wait right so your petunias are going to get anywhere from 6 to 12 inches tall in a container you're going to go on the shorter side and then the vermilionaire is going to be like 18 inches. So just be patient as far as um, getting your height difference that will come and i am going to go ahead and put two in there because you put one absolutely again depends on what your intent is when you are planting your containers i am going for kind of that instant wow factor for my hummingbirds so i am putting two of each so there we go another little trick for you is to take your tags and just slide them down into the pot where you don't see them so that way one like here at the nursery like i could have them that way so our customers could see oh well that's kufia the vermilionaire and that's royal velvet so i'll go find those or if you're like me as a gardener sometimes when you get to the end of the season you're like now what was that plant and you can pull out and you have it right there for you so super bells coral sun then we've got Vermilionaire, fantastic one, and then the Supertunia Royal Velvet. So already we have got three different plants, right? So we've got a Calibrachoa, a Petunia, and a Kufia. Now, my biggest container over here, we, um, you're going to use your imagination and dream with me of how this is going to look when it is all said and done. We are going to use another petunia. So this is Supertunia Bordeaux. This is a great plant, extremely popular because it has that beautiful bicolor of the purple. The throat is really, really nice and dark. And then as the edges come out, it turns to a really nice lavender um, shade. In the back, we're going to use a salvia. Salvias are wonderful to attract hummingbirds to your garden, whether it's an annual or a perennial. 
This one is the Rockin' Deep Purple, the improved one, and it is a annual for me. It'll be a perennial in zones 9 to 11, so in those hot zones. Now, in years past, I probably would not recommend Rockin' Deep Purple to go into um, a container because in the past, it was really kind of wild and wooly. It was the, um, the one that was the most, I don't want to say out of control, but it kind of was out of control. And I just didn't think it, it looked very nice and neat and tidy in a pot. Well, Proven Winners picked up on that as well. And they went ahead and improved this sweet thing. So this is the Rock and Deep Purple Improved. Last year, we trialed this. I had it in the wheelbarrow and I also had it in the landscape. So much more well behaved. Nice, tighter habit on it. Darker flowers, more abundant flowers on it. Hummingbirds go nuts over this thing. I have two buds. I don't have any blooms. So that's why I say you got to use your imagination and this will get nice and tall and really full. So this is going to be my one that is going to be the tallest and is going to be the most full. That is why I put it in this big pot. So I'm going to take my Bordeaux and my Bordeaux is small right now as well as a grower nursery, right? So we bring in our plants at various times through the, the growing season. You may, if you watch our videos, you know that we bring in plants in shifts. The Royal Velvet was the first round of annuals we got and this selection of Bordeaux is more on the latter side. And so that's why Bordeaux is a little bit smaller right now than Royal Velvet. It's just the age of the plant. It is not what it's going to do in maturity. So just imagine that your Bordeaux is nice and full and spilling over just like the Royal Velvet is right now and though even more. So we'll have nice dark rich purple flowers of the salvia that pairs with the Royal Velvet, a nice lighter shade of purple of the Supertunia Bordeaux, the orange of the Vermillionaire, and the orange and the yellow of the um, the Supertunia's Coral Sun. So what are the growing requirements for these sweet things? Well, you want to have a full sun. So full sun means at least five to six hours of good direct sun. And these are all going to be moderate drinkers and they're going to be moderate feeders, meaning because it's in a container, you're going to have to water it um, this time of year. Not so much because you're getting rain. It's cooler temperatures. As the season progresses though, you're really going to have to probably water it every day and just depends on how high your temperatures are. You may have to water it twice a day. So that is just a thought. Now I have one more trick though to share with you about how to keep your containers um, nice and nourished and keep that moisture under control in there. So my last little trick for you, and again, if you're a regular here at Garden Creek Side, you know this is not new or earth shattering. Um, but I have a bag of land and sea. Uh, it got busted open at the nursery and I was like, oh darn, I guess Jenny's just gonna have to use that bag of land and sea. So I like to top dress the containers with a really nice high quality compost like the land and sea. Why do I do that? Well, it insulates the roots, it helps retain moisture, and it helps prevent any kind of like weed germination because weed seeds blow in the wind, right? And so sometimes even in your pots, you can get that rogue weed. And so this really helps. Plus it brings great nutrition to the container. So just come through, do a very nice little light coating of the compost in there and it will do great. Now, do you have to use these exact plants or these exact colors? No, you don't. Um, and in fact, if you stay tuned till the end of the video, I'm going to have some graphics up there of all the different kinds of annuals that will help attract hummingbirds. So not only the annuals, I'm going to give you a list of perennials and shrubs. So adding these plants to your garden, of course, just attracts those hummingbirds and keeps them nice and well fed throughout the growing season. If you are like me and you want to use plants and to provide feeders for your hummingbirds, the easiest way to, is to make your own hummingbird food. Super simple, y'all. It is like one part of water to, no, yeah, one part sugar to four parts water. In my brain, it's one cup of water to a fourth of a cup of sugar. There you go. Um, if you, again, like me in the summertime and your hummers are eating you out of house and home, 
I will make a nice big kind of a bulk container of it and just keep it in the fridge. That way when I need it, I pull it out and I fill up my feeders and all is well. Now, one of our very first videos that we ever filmed, and it was the first video that actually Proven Winners ran of ours, was the infamous container of Vermillionaire with the lemon coral sedum. So I didn't have a petunia with it because I love the contrast of that chartreuse, really bright, vibrant green of the lemon coral sedum. So I still had vermilionaire in the back and then lemon coral in the front. And if you've grown lemon coral, you know that it too will spill over. It was a stunning container. People loved that video. So I will link it so you can watch it. Uh, just remember that was one of our very first videos that we did for YouTube. Very first one for um, Proven Winners. So it does does have some uh, sentimental value for us, but that was a couple of years ago. The thing is, is like we want to plant our gardens with a diversity of plants. So not only do we attract hummingbirds to our gardens, but that we attract pollinators and then birds, all sorts of God's little creatures in our gardens because that if you have a really diverse ecosystem in your garden, that means you have a healthy garden and that is what we are going for. So just remember when you're picking out plants, if you are looking to attract those hummingbirds, you want really nice bold colors because they see an ultraviolet. You want to have um, a bloom where they can get in there and really enjoy the nectar like this vermilionaire, the petunias, even though there are totally two different types of flower, vermilionaire being very tight, petunias, calabricoas being more upright, um, like open. The hummingbirds love them both. We get hummingbirds in the nursery all the time, like in the greenhouses, because they're going for the hanging baskets of the petunias and the calabricoas. So they absolutely love them. Be on the lookout for your hummers. I know there is like a migratory map that you can look and it will tell you like where people spot them and coming up. Of course, we are in the Piedmont just outside of Charlotte. So it was April 1st that we had our very first hummingbird. I know we have some friends just south of us, a great uh, customer of ours, Miss Pat. She is at about an hour south of us. She had seen hers a couple of days ahead of, of us. So if you're north of us, they're coming your way. Very, very exciting. Hope you have found this fun and informative. Stay tuned for those graphics because they're great information. And as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.